Namshaya. Today we are going to learn about the chapter circles. We are all familiar with the word circles, isn't it? From smaller classes onwards, we have learned what are circles. For example, just think about the circular things around us. The top portion of a well, the cross section of a pipe and the most familiar one nowadays it is smiley, isn't it? Which says, be happy and keep smiling. Let us recall what is the definition of a circle. What is the definition of a circle? Circle is made up of infinitely many points. Okay, circle is made up of infinitely many points. So we can define a circle as collection of infinite number of points on a plane which is at a constant distance from a fixed point. Which is at a constant distance from a fixed point. This fixed point is called as the center and the constant distance is called as the radius. Okay. Last year we have learned several terms like chord, sector, segment etc. This year we are going to learn how a circle behaves with a line. If I ask you to draw a circle and a line on a board, on a plane, let us see how a circle behaves with a line. That means a circle is here and a line. Here the line does not touch the circle. And here the name of the line or the line is called as a non-intersecting line because the line does not touch the circle. Second case, if I ask you to draw a circle and a line once again, another person may draw like this, isn't it? Okay, here the line touches the circle at two points, two distinct points that will be AB. Here the line L is called as a secant. Here the line L is called as a secant. Let us consider one more case. If I give the chance to someone else, that person may draw the line like this. Here, the line touches the circle at a point only. At a point only, P. Here, this line is called as tangent. This line is called as tangent to a circle. In this chapter, we are going to learn more about tangent to a circle. Tangent to a circle is a line which intersects the circle at only one point. A tangent is defined as a line which intersects the circle at only one point. Okay. Now just think of how many tangents can be drawn on a circle? How many tangents can be drawn on a circle? We know that circle is made up of infinite number of points. So at each point on the circle we can draw a tangent. At each point on a circle we can draw a tangent. So if the question comes like how many tangents can be drawn on a circle, we can say we can draw infinite number of tangents on a circle. If I ask you how many tangents can be drawn on a single point, how many tangents can be drawn at a single point on a circle, at a single point only one tangent can be drawn. So be very careful. Infinite number of tangents can be drawn on a circle and at a point only one single tangent can be drawn. Okay. A tangent to a circle is a special case of secant. A tangent to a circle can also be defined as a special case of secant in which the length of the corresponding chord reduces to a single point or the length of the corresponding chord coincides to a single point. Here when we keep this, this is a secant. If the length of the chord, if the length of the chord get reduced, then it touches the circle at only one single point and then the secant becomes a tangent. Here I have told you at one point we can draw only one tangent. So here I have drawn a tangent. Similarly 
at this point we can draw again a tangent. So we can say that at each point on the circle we can draw a tangent that is infinite number of tangents can be drawn on a circle. Okay, now we will discuss the property of tangents. We are going to discuss about the property of a tangent. Clear? Let us see. A circle with center O and radius R. Here, line L is a tangent which touches the circle at the point P. Just think of a wheel moving along a road. If a wheel moves along a road, this can be considered as the spokes of the wheel. Spokes are always along the radius. We can see that once the wheel moves, this wheel, that the spokes of the wheel and this tangent are perpendicular to each other. If you have noticed, we can see that the spokes of the wheel and this tangent are perpendicular to each other. So here we are going to learn a theorem which says the tangent which is drawn to a circle is always perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. So theorem number one. We are going to learn the theorem that like is a tangent to a circle is always perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact P. Okay, let us see how we can prove this theorem. We are going to prove this theorem. What all things are given? A circle is given with center O and radius R and tangent line L. This is the tangent line L which touches the circle at the point P, given condition. What we need to prove is, to prove, we need to prove OP perpendicular to L. We need to prove OP perpendicular to L. For this, a construction is needed. Construction, we are going to construct another line OQ which touches the tangent at Q. Construct another line OQ which touches the tangent at L. We need to prove that OP is perpendicular to the line L. Now we will start the proof. We can see that OQ is a line which touches the circle at another point. Let it be R. So we can write OQ can be written as OQ can be written as OR plus RQ, isn't it? OQ can be written as OR plus RQ. And just see OR and OP both are OR and OP both are the radii of the circle. OR and OP are the radii of the circle. And OQ is equal to OR plus RQ, which says, which says OQ is greater than OR. It says OQ is greater than, sorry, which says OQ is greater than OP. Whichever point we take on this tangent L, we can see that all these points, if we draw the line joining O to that point, all the lines will be greater than this point OP. Because P lies on the circle, whichever point we take on this line segment will be outside the circle. So that all line segments will be greater than OP. So we know that OP is the shortest line segment. We can say that OP is the shortest line segment and we have learned earlier shortest line segment is perpendicular. Shortest line segment from a point to a line is perpendicular. Shortest line segment will be perpendicular to the line. So we can conclude OP perpendicular to the radius. Sorry, OP perpendicular to the line L. Clear? Now let us discuss number of tangents from a point on a circle. That is how many tangents can be drawn from a point outside it? How many tangents can be drawn if a point is inside the circle? Or how many tangents can be 
drawn if a point lies on the circle. Okay. So first case we'll consider if a point is inside the circle. Let the point P be inside the circle. How many tangents can be drawn if the point P is inside the circle? There is no tangent. If a point lies inside the circle, there is no tangent. That is we cannot draw a tangent from a point inside the circle. If you draw the tangent means it will definitely touch the circle at two distinct points. That means there is no tangent if a point B lies inside the circle. What about if a point P lies on the circle? If a point P lies on the circle, we have already learned only one tangent can be drawn if the point P lies on the circle. Now consider the third case. If a point P lies outside the circle. If a point P lies outside the circle, we can see that we can draw two tangents from a point P outside the circle. Let us name it as PA and PB. Once again, if point P lies inside the circle, there is no tangent which can be drawn if the point is inside the circle. If the point P lies on the circle means one tangent can be drawn and if the point P lies outside the circle means two tangents can be drawn from a point P outside the circle. These are the three cases we can consider when the point is inside, outside and on the circle. We have already seen from an external point P two tangents can be drawn to a circle. So our theorem 2 states that if a tangent is drawn from an external point P then the length of those two tangents are equal in length. That is the tangent drawn from an external point P to a circle are equal in length. So here a circle is given with center O. P is a point lying outside the circle. PA and PB are the tangents. OA and OB are the radii of the circle. We need to prove PA is equal to PB. To prove PA is equal to PB. Proof. How can you prove? Consider the triangles. Let us consider the triangles PAO and triangles PAO and triangle PBO. Okay. Here we can see that OA is equal to OB. OA equal to OB. Both are radii of the same circle. OA and OB are radii of the same circle. What about OP? Line segment OP is common to OP is common to both the triangles. And we can see that Angle 1. We mark here angle 1 and angle 2 here. Radius and tangent is perpendicular to each other. We have already learned in theorem 1. Radius and tangent is always perpendicular. So we can mention angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Here also this is OB's radius and PB is a tangent. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. So from these three results we can write triangle PAO congruent to triangle PBO by which congruence see which congruence it is we are having a right angle a hypotenuse and one of its sides so they are congruent by RHS congruence clear so if these two triangles are congruent we can say that the corresponding sides will be equal which implies PA will be equal to P Hence, it is proved that this length of the tangent drawn from an external points are equal in length. Clear? Let's do an example. See, a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral ABCD, a quadrilateral ABCD is drawn to circumscribe a circle. Okay, quadrilateral ABCD is drawn to circumscribe a circle. That means circle lies inside the quadrilateral. And it touches, the circle touches the quadrilateral at points P, Q, R and S. We need to prove that, here we need to prove that AB plus CD 
is equal to to prove I write to prove here to prove AB plus CD is equal to BC plus A. Once again, we are having a circle which touches the quadrilateral at point P, Q, R, and S. We need to prove that AB plus CD is equal to BC plus A. Based on the theorem what we have learned, the second theorem, that is the length of the tangents drawn from an external point are always equal. Length of the tangents drawn from an external point are always equal, we have learned. Using that theorem, we are going to prove this. Okay, so let us take, let us take the tangent at point A. What can you say about the tangent drawn from the point A? Here we can say AP will be equal to AS. AP will be equal to AS. Reason? Tangents drawn from an external point. Tangents drawn from an external point. We have already learned the theorem. So we know that tangents drawn from an external point are equal in it. So we got AP equal to AS. Similarly, what can you say about BP and BQ? BP. BP equal to BQ. Same reason. Same reason. No need to mention it here again. BP is equal to BQ. Again, what can you say about DR? DR equal to D is the point X for a point. DR equal to DS. DR equal to DS. What about CR and CQ? CR equal to CQ. Okay, these are the four equations we get. Let us take it as equation 1, equation 2, equation 3 and equation 4. We need to prove AB plus CD is equal to, that is, this line segment plus this line segment is equal to BC plus CD. Now add the four equations. Equation 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Let us see what we get. AP, left hand side we are having AP plus BP plus DR plus CR. AP plus BP plus CR plus we write DR. DR plus CR is equal to right hand side AS plus BQ plus DS plus C. These are the things we are having on left hand side. Now, just see what is AP plus BP. You see, AP plus BP can be written as what? AP plus BP can be grouped. So, what is AP plus BP? Look at this line segment. AP plus BP is AB. So, we can write AB. And just see what is DR plus CR. DR plus CR is our line segment. CD is equal to that side AS plus BQ. See, AS plus BQ. We, can, we can't add AS and BQ, isn't it? So, we have to rearrange here. AS plus. Which can be added together with AS, DS. So, we rearrange here. AS plus DS plus BQ plus CQ. Only after rearranging, we can add it. Now, how can you add it? AS plus DS can be written as AD. And... BQ plus CQ. BQ plus CQ can be done as BC. So we get AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. That was our AB plus CD equal to AD 